to the fraternal orders collectively known as the mysteries, the very highest degrees of which combined together make up a secret order known as the Illuminati. Their goal is to destroy all existing religions save theirs, all existing governments save theirs, and shackle the mob in a system of eternal oppressive debt chained to a computer for the rest of their life in a propagandized world to make them believe that they are happy in this system. Now do you think they're succeeding? Yes. Haven't I described to you just now exactly what is going on in the world today? Yes, they're succeeding. They're succeeding because the American people don't understand their enemy. They don't even know what's happening. They may have been or may be members of the Christian or Jewish religion, but that is only to further their own ends. They are and always have been Luciferian and internationalist. They give allegiance to no particular nation, although they have used, on occasion, nationalism to further their causes. Their only concern is to gain greater economic and political power. The ultimate objective of the leaders of both groups is identical. They are determined to win for themselves undisputed control of the wealth, natural resources, and manpower of the entire planet. They intend to turn the world into their conception of a Luciferian totalitarian socialist state. I can tell you that when George Bush says out of the Middle East crisis will come a new world order, he is not joking. And the new world order is not what you think it is, friendly nations working together. It's going to be a one world totalitarian socialist government. Some of the reasons for this are good, some of them are not. The intelligence community felt that John F. Kennedy was a threat to the national security, which translated into reality means was a threat to the New World Order, the one world government which they were uh, actively um, in the process of forming. Was there anything on record that indi indicated that he was out to, uh, well, things that he, he did would threaten that New World Order? Oh, absolutely. He had written an executive order. I don't remember the exact number now, but it's available to anybody that wants to go look it up. Uh, he had written an executive order uh, ordering the printing of United States notes, which would have broken the back of the Federal Reserve, which is one of the major instruments of propelling the United States into the New World Order by destroying our, our economy, the basis upon which we live, mm -hmm. um, the basis upon which our, our whole society is founded, is, is being ripped right out from under us. Uh, they destroyed the political will of the nation when they assassinated John F. Kennedy which has furthered their goals because it made a lot of people feel so helpless right. that, God, if they can kill the president, who am I? You know, what, what can I do? I'm just one lonely, helpless person. So they quit voting. They abdicated their power. And, of course, through agents like Robert Groden and, and many others, uh, Oliver Stone, they're being convinced that our government sucks that our government is the problem, that the Constitution doesn't work, playing, that the Bill of Rights aren't real. We're playing right into their hands, in other words. We're playing right into their hands because there's nothing wrong with the Constitution or the Bill of Rights or our government. The you see, it's been infiltrated. And from within, they are eating at the heart of this nation like a cancer, this secret society. They are destroying it. They are subverting it. Another thing I've done for people is I've put it together for them so that they can see the overall picture rather than looking at small um, things and, and thinking that it's isolated. Nothing is isolated. It's all part of a big puzzle. Mm -hmm. And the puzzle is coming together. And when the puzzle is assembled, it's going to be a one-world totalitarian socialist government that nobody's going to like except the people that are running it. It's Hitler all over again. And the rationalization is, we're going to create the world without war. The utopia. The utopia. But they will never create that utopia because they're not dealing with the problem that makes them want to create it. 
and that is the inherent flaw in each individual human being that makes us do the things that we do. Until that's overcome, there's never going to be a world without war or without rape or without killing or without robbery. And anybody that thinks that there is has already gone off the deep end. So the method is, here, I'm going to hold a gun to your head so you won't rape, you won't kill. That's right. Very, yes, okay, I understand. To which he was chained to the Garden of Eden and thus brought the gift of intellect, wisdom, to man. And thus is the true benevolent God. And man, with his intellect and his wisdom and his knowledge, will create technology which will elevate man to the position of God. And all this is allegorical. Don't take the, the story literally, you see, because it's all allegorical. They believe that intellect, reason, is the light. Mm -hmm. is the true God is what makes man God and I'm not going to debate the, 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 the right or wrongness of that because who the hell knows <laughs> but I can tell you that, that um, they pervert whatever it is that might be divine about their philosophy mm -hmm. by becoming what they profess they to, destroy. to destroy because in the end, it's not going to matter whether Jesus ever lived or didn't live. The story is real, and it's within all of us. And uh, it, it brings us to something within ourselves that is good. But these men don't look at that. They believe that the end justifies the means, that these stories are just stories. And that the real meaning behind it all is that man can transcend his animal state through the realization of intellect and the overcoming of all of his emotions and feelings and uh, morals, guilt, all of these things. And I just can't go along with that because I believe it's our emotions that tell us when we're doing wrong. We feel it within ourselves. If you want to know what's going to happen in the future, if we don't wake up and through the power of those, see, not one drop of blood ever has to be spilled and no one has to ever put any chains on their legs or their arms, ever. If people just wake up and exercise what was given to us in our Constitution, the power of the vote, while we still have that power. So you say there is still a possibility for like one individual watching this tape to actually make a difference. You better believe it. How yes. would that be so? Well, number one, learn what the truth really is get away from the fantasy that you've been living, educate other people, those you know, your family. Once that begins to happen, it spreads. And then if the people decide that they don't want what they have in store for us, planned, just through the power of the vote, they can make this country and the world whatever they want it to be. Whatever they want it to be. And there are no limits on that. They don't really uh, consider you to be a threat unless you develop a large political following. Oh, okay. So, unless you have a large political following, you're not considered to be a threat okay. to them. Because okay. they figure that the people are too stupid to listen to you anyway. And generally, they're right. <laughs> so we're in the process of educating people, then. Yeah. It's the best thing. Education is 60 or 70 percent of the battle. Yeah. Because people automatically begin to do the right things once they learn what the truth is. Our education. And plot the fate of billions. And nobody even cares about it. But six football players go to lunch together, and it's in the headlines across the country. You have a reflection of the society in which that exists. And it is a sick, sick society that is doomed to self-destruction. So based on that scenario, there's some truth into what these, these men are looking at. Absolutely, and that's what makes me so sick, is that I'm trying to wake up a people who on a daily basis are proving the ones that I'm warning them about to be right. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, so that even though a minority, there are people out there that you recognize are awake to this, if they don't do something about it, they will lose that ability to be free in that way. That's correct. Whether they might think, well, I don't need to worry about it because I know what I know and I'm fine. That's it right. doesn't work that way. There's yes. a connection here to everything. That is correct. That from me. 
We're in this situation because all of us, me included, were dummies for most of our lives. And unless we change that, we are never going to turn anything around. And that is the cold, hard truth. Whether we like it or not. And we all, at some point in our life, have to go in the bathroom, confront our own self in the mirror and say, Bill Cooper, you've been a fool for most of your life. What is the matter with you? You've got to stop it right now. You've got to stop being stupid. You've got to become a real American. You've got to care about things. You've got to find out what the truth is so you know what to care about. And it's hard to say. I know because I've done it. I couldn't be up here if I had not confronted myself in that manner. You've got to do that. You have to do it. If you can't, you can't make a change. The supremacy of the mind of man, not in God. Anytime man has supremacy over everything, everything becomes what? Subjective. Subject, if you're God, how can you do something wrong? And that's the whole problem with this crowd now. They don't have anybody to answer to. You see, whether you believe in God or not, the human race must have God. They must have a superior power to which they must answer. If they do not, then everything becomes subjective. And if I want to slice your head in half, by God, there's nothing wrong with me doing it because I'm God. You understand that? That's really what's wrong. The most dangerous radio host in America because I simply tell you the truth. I will not wax eloquent. I will not polish your knob. I will not lie to you. I will not tell you that you are the most brilliant, smartest, best educated people in the world because at this very moment it is a lie. You are for the most part apathetic, ignorant, and stupid or we would not be in the situation that we are in now. And all you have to do to change that is go into your bathroom, look in the mirror, and you will see everything that ails America today. Look yourself right in the eye and say, I've been stupid, apathetic, and ignorant, but I will never be stupid, apathetic, and ignorant again for the rest of my life. I am going to change that right now. Eventually, right. One of the one of the greatest misconceptions that anyone can have is that man is God. Man is not God. We're uh, a fragment of that. We, we are a fragment of God, but man has to understand that no part can be as great or greater than the whole. Mm -hmm. So man cannot set himself up as God. People who think that man is God and worship knowledge and technology and believe that by the use of knowledge and technology man can become God or can be God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are actually practicing Satanism. And I'll tell you why. The worship of knowledge is Satanism. The concept that man can be God or is God is Satanism. Not because I'm a Bible thumper or anything like that, but because if you believe the story in the Bible that Satan enticed Eve to pick the apple from the tree of knowledge mm -hmm. and make Adam eat it, which is the original sin, uh, myth, yeah. then you have to understand if that apple represents knowledge, then the worship of that apple is Satan. And everybody thought religion was a joke. If you don't believe in God, for all intents and purposes, to you there is no God. Remember this. If the people who rule the world and have the power and the money to manipulate large masses of money believe in God, you better understand what that God is and what it means for you. Because you're always on the bad end of the stick. And if they believe in Lucifer, you better understand that also. Because you're still on the bad end of the stick. Because unless you take the power, you never are going to have any. In this country, it started out that the citizens had all the power. And over the years, the citizens, because of their greed, their apathy, and their irresponsibility, have given it away to those who were waiting with open arms to take it from you. Something happened that brought man out of that state, and if you're talking from a biblical reference, out of the Garden of Eden and into the world. 
He wasn't innocent anymore. He understood that he was naked, and that his partner was naked. He could think. He could look around. He knew when something was good and when it was bad, just as we all do here. When somebody comes up to me and says, well, how do we know which is the right way to go? I know that person is setting me up to justify his bad deeds, and I won't do it. You always know. We always know which is the right way and which is the bad way. The bad way sometimes feels better, so we may choose that way and justify it by rationalization in order to make ourselves feel better about the bad that we did. That you can never make everything all right and you can never make everything all bad. Both must exist and we must maintain a balance. Mm -hmm. And we must become responsible. If each individual on this earth learned to walk in a divine state of grace, responsible for themselves, their family, their city, their state, their country, and for the world. And to the laws of nature. And to the laws of nature. And actively participate in solving the problems of yourself, your family, your city, your state, your country, and the world. There could never be a group of men meeting behind closed doors in secret that could ever control anybody mm -hmm. but by abdicating responsibility by not walking in that divine state of grace makes possible anyone meeting behind closed doors to bring about the world that they want to 